Hello and welcome. I know previous video we were able to create uh, the uh, media or to configure the handling of the media files, uh, in particularly the blog header. Uh, however, there is one uh, kind of a uh, situation that we have here. And uh, if you let's open one of the posts that we had created initially, you realize that it's trying to look for the header image, but it cannot find it. Okay. Uh, so this, you know, we need to create a kind of an error handling. Uh, or how what does it do when there is no uh, media uh, header image? Okay. So that we do not we do not get this error. So we're going to go back to the template. So in my view, the simplest way is to work from this template. So you can say. You can create an if statement uh, saying that if it exists, yeah, then show this uh, content and then end the if. So what happens is that if the, if the content is not there, then it's not going to uh, do anything. It's not going to show this error. So let's first save then I go back to the posts so now you can see you can see the posts that do not cause these other posts do not have the header file okay so that is one way of uh, kind of uh, fixing that and I think this goes to any other you know you may have added and at some point it may not exist the template is going to uh, throw an error so you need to kind of see how you can take care of that uh, error. In our previous video, we were able to look at uh, the addition of uh, or incorporation of media files, and we were able to install the Pillow uh, library, uh, that party library, and use it in adding of the blog header. And uh, we open one of these. You see, we have this blog header, so we were able to incorporate the image upload using the media files and the uh, pillow library. So in this tutorial, we are going to look at uh, what you call the sitemap. And uh, the sitemap is a file that, in, uh, in simplicity terms, it's a file that tells the search engine like Google and Bing and others how often a given page in a website is uh, updated and how important it is with respect to the other pages. So normally it's used in very large sites like the newspapers, websites, uh, blogs, and the rest. Uh, maybe I got a little description here from uh, Google, uh, whereby a site is a file where you provide more information about pages and videos and other files than relationships. And search engines like Google read the file to crawl uh, your site more often, or more efficiently rather. A sitemap tells Google which pages and file you think they're important to your site, and also it provides valuable information. Okay, so Django itself has a, a sitemap framework, and uh, that's what we are going to incorporate. And we're just going to incorporate a simple, uh, you know, see, a simple sitemap uh, configuration. Uh, but you can browse into the details to see how you can probably configure it to. Uh, maybe provide more information and uh, customize it further. So we will uh, go uh, into our code. And uh, as you can see here, the first step is to add the Django contrib sitemaps into our installed apps. And uh, there's one recommendation, and uh, I'll just copy this first. And uh, one recommendation is that uh, let me go to my sites settings.py. That we need to have this Django contrib site. Uh, so I'll just paste it there and I'll add a, a comment at the end. So the other thing we need to ensure is also we have our site ID, which I believe we added during where we have this which we used during our the configuring the all auth for the user authentication. Uh, so those are the two things that uh, I could say that we ensure. 
Then the next step that uh, we will follow, we will create inside the application, which is a website. I will create a, a sitemaps.py file. Sitemaps.py file. Yes, and I can add it into under uh, version control. And uh, we are, I'm going to add uh, this way. I'm going to add uh, this information. So I'm just going to copy it from the code uh, for, from the Django documentation. And then from the models, I'm going to copy. I'm going to import the blog posts. So I'm just creating a sitemap for. Uh, my uh, blog posts and for this one I can just call it blog post sitemap uh, and it also uh, inherits the, uh, the sitemap and then we have this change frequency so according to the Django documentation you can see that the change frequency uh, refers to uh, you know the frequency in which how often does this do these pages change? Is it always hourly, daily, or never? So that, as you can see, the from the code that I've pasted, it's set to never. But I can probably add it to, let me say, weekly, or I can set it to monthly, uh, just for demonstration purposes. And for the priority, uh, this is in relation to the other website. So. It, it ranges from uh, 0 to 1.0, 0, 0.0 to 1.0. And uh, it is, uh, as I have said earlier, it is uh, how it is important in relation to the other pages in the website. So for the priority, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And then we have this function that is uh, items. So we are going to fetch, uh, we can filter. Actually, this is a query. So in this case, I'm going to check the blog post and I'm going to fetch uh, all posts. So this is a query, We're querying the blog post model and uh, we can add a filter uh, and we filter these with status and the status, we are only interested in the blog posts which have been published. Okay, so these objects dot all. This is where we are making use of the ORM and the query sets, the Django query sets. So uh, think of it like from blog. Uh, if it's in SQL, we have from blog post uh, select all, and then we have a where clause where uh, post uh, or blog post dot status uh, is equals to published. So we are interested in the published po published posts only. Then we have these last mode, which I believe means last, when it was last modified. So we have these OBJ and uh, the last mode, I think I'll refer to the model. So inside the blog post, we have when it was updated. So I'll use dot updated. I'm using the dot notation for the object. So it will be dot updated. If I click on this, you'll see that it is it is detecting that uh, pointing to the blog post or to the uh, blog category. But in this case, of course, we are referring to the blog post. Yeah. So I think that is a uh, uh, good from our end. The other step, it will, we will we will edit the URL so that you can be able to search. Uh, if I go to my website and Probably check on sitemap uh, .xml. It can show me something, but as you can see, as it is now, there is no. We do not have that URL, so we need to add the URL, and we will add it in the main uh, URL configuration. And uh, as a first step, we are going to import uh, the sitemap from views. We'll refer to the Django uh, documentation. I'm going to copy this. Then I will incorporate it here from Django.contrib uh, import sitemap. I think I can show sure that it's somewhere here. And then 
uh, I'm going to import the sitemap. So from website.sitemap, the file that we have just created, uh, we will import blog post sitemap. So this blog post sitemap is what we have created in the sitemap uh, sitemaps.py file, and we are adding uh, importing it into the main URL uh, configuration. And then we will add a path. And actually, before we add the path, just going to add something here. I'm going to uh, probably call this sitemap. And it will be equal to, well, I'm going to create a, a dictionary uh, for, that has the key as blog posts. And the value is a blog post sitemap. Okay. So we will, uh, inside the path, we are going to uh, definitely we'll call it the sitemap.xml. So we'll stick to the standard uh, that is normally used. And then we are going to add a comma there, and then we're going to add site sitemap uh, that we have imported from the views. Okay, because we need to, if you look at the URL setup, we have, uh, let me move to this. We have the route, we have the view, and then we have the name. So we are still using that kind of uh, standard flow of the URL. So we have the name, and for the name, uh, it's going to be equals to these uh, jungle views dot. I need to add a dot site, and uh, let's see. We are doing. I'm going to make reference to this. So we have the path sitemap. Uh, sitemaps. Yeah, we have another additional parameter, which is this. Uh, which is this dictionary. So let's just add it here. Okay. So this is what we have as our URL pointing to the sitemaps. And uh, let's see if it's working. Okay. Yeah, so let me correct that. So, uh, if we look at our code, I think everything should be working fine. So we are going to go to this uh, URL. And uh, I'm just going to add a slash. I believe I was probably putting in some wrong values. Yeah, this is what we have. You can see that we have uh, an XML file that uh, shows the last modified uh, change frequency. And you'll notice that it has this example.com. This is because we have not given our site uh, uh, let's say a domain name. So if you are you're publicly you're publicly hosted your Django website or your or this website, you can be able you can edit this example.com uh, if you have purchased a domain uh, of sorts, and then you can add uh, it will automatically uh, appear here. And uh, maybe just to make try and explain. can be able to look inside the administration and under sites you see that we have example.com so this is why this is why this is coming from so if you have a domain name and we set it to something then it will that's what it's going to show uh, the display name uh, as well if we are going to change it then that's what it's going to to uh, reflect yeah so we've been able to Check out the. You've been able to check out this uh, site maps, and uh, in the next uh, video tutorial, we are going to look at uh, uh, how to implement the search for our blog posts.
kindly like, uh, subscribe to my channel, and uh, don't forget to click, to click on the bell icon uh, for notifications. Thank you for watching.